I went up early. So, you know, as an assistant professor, they give you five years to prove that, you know, to prove yourself worthy of being on the tenure track. And so I went up in four years. Shortly after I went up, our dean at the time decided we had, you know, at the time the administration was, they were really focused on diversity, not so much inclusion. We weren't Back then, in the in the early 2000s, we weren't really talking about inclusion, and we definitely weren't talking about belonging. We weren't talking about equity. We were talking about participation. We were talking about increasing our percentage of underrepresented, first-generation, underserved populations at Purdue University. And specifically, I'm focused on the College of Agriculture. So we had a long road to hoe because we were agriculture, which traditionally was all white male. We were in the, uh, it was during the presidency of Martin Jiski and Martin Jiski and his provost, Sally Frost Mason, had a goal of increasing the percentage of women as well as underrepresented faculty and staff at Purdue. And so at that time, our Dean said, you know, let's do something different because we were the first college to even have an office and someone focused just on diversity than anyone, any other college across campus. And so in 2005, that spring, um, the Dean said, decided to create a new position. It was a halftime position for assistant dean. So I was the first to hold, first female to hold an, an, a, a dean's title in our college for an office that didn't exist. So I applied and, and they held the, the interviews in that September of 2005 and I was a successful candidate. So, I opened an office that didn't exist, had no idea what to do, asked the dean, asked some of the associate deans who were all men, all white men, you know, what What are you looking for? What are you looking for in this office? What's my charge? They had no idea. Do you think I had a mentor for that? Absolutely not. I didn't know what to do. I so. I created a community. Community here in Indianapolis, my family played a huge part in my success, period. However, I had to create a new community. So I had to reach out. Um, when I was appointed to this position, um, all of a sudden, the Manners organization, that's minorities in agricultural, natural resources, and related sciences. So that's the student organization that we sponsor out of my office. Well, all of a sudden I became the advisor for manners. And I noticed that, okay, there is a regional meeting every fall. So I attended that the first fall. And then we had our national meeting in March. So I attended that Well, I was very new on the scene. And all of these people had been together. So it was, that was another obstacle because I had to kind of break into an already formed community. And so they didn't know who I was. They had no idea and didn't care. That was an obstacle that I had to overcome. Just trying to find a community where I felt like I belong. At first, I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. <laughs> And which was really frustrating. So I had to work carefully. So what I decided to do after that first regional and national meeting is to go and visit with some of them at their institutions. So that's how I began to break through, uh, break into the community. Uh, and that community became very supportive of me um, they shared with me ideas. 
They shared what they were doing as I visited the different campuses. I, I traveled around to several universities just trying to get an idea of where should I, where, what's my journey here with this office that didn't exist? Because I wasn't getting it because no one else on campus had an office like mine. They became that community that supported me, that tried to help mentor me. So I created a community within the Manners, National Manners Organization.